Hey, it's the Stick and Hack Show. That's Stick Mike Ryan. I'm Adam Grubb, the Hack. This episode, we have Jeremy Poinsonneau on the show. He's a blind golfer. You heard that right. And he's got an incredible story, and he's better than I am. And that stinks. Stinks on ice. Also, we play a game called In or Out, and an incredible story of another person, a uh, Dominican baseball player, who comes up big in the golf world uh, after a traumatic accident. That's now on the Stick and Hack Show. <laughs> This is the Stick and Hack Show. Conversation, discussion, debate, and golf talk from a stick, Mike Ryan, and the hack, Adam Grubb. Boys, you are up. All right, everybody, welcome in. It is the Stick and Hack Show, the most sophisticated golf show in the free world from the greatest golf club in the world without the course, Stick and Hack. Go to stickandhack.com today and become a free member for life presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com and use the code Stick and Hack for 20% off their products. More on them in a minute. Uh, Mike? Hello. Hey. That's Mike Ryan, the stick. I'm uh, the hack, Adam Grubb, and it's, uh, it's good to have you here with us on the, uh, on the program. A great show to get to today. Jeremy Poinsano is on the show. He is a blind golfer. It sounds like the start of a joke, but it isn't. He is incredible, and uh, he's got a great story to tell, and he's going to be on the show here in just a little bit uh, talking about the United States Blind Golf Association. Um, so Jeremy points to know, we look forward to talking with him also an incredible story on first up, uh, about another golfer that has overcome something pretty remarkable to be a better, uh, let me back up. Jeremy's better than me at golf and he's blind. Yes. Great. Uh, also, uh, we're going to play a game at the end, um, per usual in the clubhouse. So great show to get to, uh, Mike, uh, manscaped.com is a proud sponsor. And I can assume that, uh, as the summer comes to a close here, that, uh, the, the winter, Wool will uh, start to uh, <laughs> overtake your body. Is that right? Tame that. Yeah, no, tame no, that. Longer. It will yeah, be no longer. No yeah. longer. Uh, 20% off for free shipping. Go to manscaped.com. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet the, I bet you they hate our live reads. I bet you they hate them. They probably do. They, <laughs> like, what are, they, what are they even talking about? Just right. stri- stick to the script, Grub. Stop, <laughs> stop trying to go off script with your, with your <laughs> funny live reads. So anyway, manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping. Um, guest today, Jeremy points to know he is a competitive golfer with a rare genetic disorder called Lieber's Hereditary Optic Neuropathy. Not neuro... <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. This happened to me you earlier. these big words. Yeah. Neuropathy. Neuropathy. Okay. Uh, L-H-O-N um, for, uh, for those of you that understand acronyms. Yeah. Um, Jeremy competes with his father, serving as his guide, and he won the 2010 World Blind Golf Championship. They have since gone on to win multiple national championships, the Australian Blind Open and a second World Blind Golf Championship as well. Jeremy points to know uh, a rare genetic disorder that uh, hit him at 19. Yeah. He was a, he was a golfer and, and an athlete. And uh, once that happened, now he's, he's legally blind, and he'll explain, I'm sure, what that means. Um, yeah. But he has his, his dad as the guide to align him and help him, and yeah. um, he's a better golfer than I am. Not better than you, but he's coming after you. And, uh, but his story is remarkable. He is a better golfer than me he, based on... You're right. Based on... <laughs> you're exactly right. Because you can see... If I were blind... Right. No chance. No chance. No chance. <laughs> um, so so uh, Jeremy's coming up here in just a little bit. First off, though, we uh, have a golf movie, How a Golf Movie Changed a Life and a Game. Manuel De, De Los Santos st- stood at the tee wearing typical golf attire, a white ball cap, a vest, black polo, a pair of khakis... When he walks up to address his golf ball, there's something different about it. He's with the help of a pair of crutches. He tosses them away to the side of the tee box, and he stripes one down the center long and straight. Growing up in the Dominican Republic, De Los Santos played baseball, dreaming and planning to get to the majors like many of his countrymen. He was set to turn pro at the age of 18 in 2003 in baseball. That year, his life changed forever. He lost his leg in a motorcycle accident. And just like that, his lifelong dream of playing professional baseball was snatched away from him. Now, that is something that neither you or I can comprehend. No, that not at all. You have a lifelong dream. You work. You, you strive for, for this type of, of career. And then in an instant, it's taken away from you. Yeah. Nothing has ever happened like that to me. Nothing has ever happened like no. that to you. So De Los Santos, who was crushed, obviously, his dreams crushed, moved to Paris and attempted to start his life anew with his wife, Alina. Uh, Paris opened the door for him, he said. There is where he saw The Legend of Bagger Vance. That's right. Fantastic movie. The Legend of Bagger Vance. By the way. 
Robert Redford's movie about a down and out golfer who recovers the, his game with the help of a mystical caddy. De Los Santos says the experience changed his life. That movie changed his life. Immediately, he found his way to a golf course and he started hitting 2,000 balls a day using the grip he had previously used to crush baseballs. Friends witnessed uh, De Los Santos practicing out of a bunker, left for the day, and returned later to see the one legged golfer still practicing his newfound craft and love out of the same bunker. I haven't hit 2,000 balls in my life. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not on a range. Not on a range oh, I haven't. Okay. No total, chance. Total. Total, total, total in a range. I've never hit 2,000 <laughs> balls. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, he, golf had become now his passion and become that next level thing for him in his recovery. Um, can you imagine, Mike, that feeling and then finding something? And, and I bet you can because golf does that to people. Golf has that way of leaking into your life and yeah. taking it over. Yeah, I mean, I can see how people, well, I mean, um, for obvious reasons, I see how people catch the bug, if you will, of golf, and then they just become, you know, completely obsessed with it. So, and especially if he was as uh, dedicated as he was to baseball, I'm sure that translated very well. Yeah, to, right. To yeah, exa exactly right. And yeah. putting in the practice and the effort and the yeah. dedication. Yeah. Um, but he was looking for something to fill the void sure. yeah, that absolutely. baseball was no longer yeah. part, of his, part of his life. For sure. So uh, in, in a game that could take a lifetime to master, at the age of 25, De Los Santos found himself on, a, on King's Barn, which some call the Pebble Beach of Scotland, competing in an elite pro-am tournament. Now, you look to the scorecard, it would appear as if the Dominican had a decent round, shooting 76. But playing with only one leg, yeah. his score was phenomenal. Since his round in Scotland, De Los Santos has become a three handicapper. And he is by far the best three, handica three handicapper in the world well, because yeah. he has one leg. For sure. Unlike uh, most amputee golfers, De Los Santos refuses to wear a prosthetic to balance out his weight. That is what is surprising to me. So think about that. Think yeah. about, I mean, we've got people, <laughs> a guy very close to us that falls, basically falls over every time every he swings. Every time he swings a club <laughs> with two legs. He's, he's got a bit of a weight transfer. I have, I have trouble staying, staying upright sometimes. <laughs> so so he, he refuses to wear a prosthetic. And to power the ball 300-plus yards down the fairway with just one leg, he has this powerful core and a rigorous exercise regimen that keeps him as strong as possible. Uh, the training has obviously paid off for him. But here, Mike, stick is the real kicker. Okay. He does not use a golf cart. <laughs> Shut up. I swear <laughs> That's incredible. He says he uses his crutches. He doesn't wow. use a golf cart. And he says, I'm an athlete. I walk. <laughs> so there you go. I, if that doesn't get you excited I and mean, get you into a, into yeah. a, hey, I can do anything. And start For and sure. stop complaining about your own game yeah. and your own effort. Yeah. This guy has one leg <laughs> and is a three handicap and yeah. put in the work, put in the time and doesn't let his disability and his handicap affect him and affect his love for golf. And we've talked a lot about the healing power of golf. Yeah. We've had guests on here um, from the Veterans Association. We've had guests on here that have had uh, to overcome something in their life. It is no shock and no surprise that golf can heal somebody. If not physically, he, they can heal them mentally and or spiritually. And I'm sure this yep. is a spiritual adventure for De Los Santos. I agree. Absolutely. It's an amazing story, and, uh, you know, <laughs> the fact that he walks is just He walks. <laughs> incredible. He walks. No card for me. That's great. I'll, I'll, I'll walk. But the, the, the strength that it would take to, to hit that ball anyway, you think about, you know, yeah. rough and sand trap and, sure. and all of the, the idiosyncrasies of a golf swing yeah. and, and his ability to, to learn that. Right. Because he wasn't a golfer. He was a baseball player. Right. Now – I, I, I have a lot of friends who, who used to play baseball in college or, or whatever, and they just instinctively have that golf skill. Yeah. And, it's, and it's because of the hand-eye coordination. It's because of, right. of the hands and, 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 and their ability to truly power through something. I, a guy I know hits his five iron, you know, 240, <laughs> something like that. I mean, he can't putt for, right. for anything. Right. But he, he hits the ball a long way. So yeah. the baseball obviously helps. So yeah. Adela Santos, just an incredible story. And not to outdo him and not to outdo that story, but we bring in now into the conversation, Jeremy points to know he's a husband, a golfer, and legally blind. And there's a good chance that he is better than you. 
<laughs> and he joins us now on the Stick and Hack Show. Jeremy, welcome in to the Stick and Hack program. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for getting up early out there in the West. You're in San Diego, so we do appreciate your uh, your early rise this morning. Um, Jeremy, you heard that story about De Los Santos. It, it mirrors yours in a way where almost the same age, something uh, catastrophic and tragic happened to you. Uh, you might not think of it that way now, but at the time, it was pretty, pretty uh, astounding. You lost your sight. Um, tell us a little bit about that first. Uh, first of all, let's, just to get it out on the record here, um, what is your current handicap? Uh, I'm blind. Right. Right. Uh, oh. that, that's my handicap. <laughs> oh, God. I think um, we might. You kind of walked into that one. Well, I didn't mean to. Um, I was trying to get some things on the record here, Mike. Maybe, maybe edit me next time. What, uh, what is your current <laughs> index? Let's try that. Uh, my current index right now is 10.3. Okay, 10.3. My God. That's excellent. Wow, congratulations on that. So you, uh, you're legally blind. What, is, what does that mean? Yeah, so it was definitely a traumatic life experience. I lost my central vision in a matter of two months when I was a 19-year-old sophomore in college. So for me, um, everything in the middle is completely blurred out. So if people put their hands directly in front of their face like this, um, that's what my sight's like all the time. Uh, I've got the top, the sides, and the bottom, complete peripheral vision. So i got to kind of look above, below, or to the side of things to somewhat be able to see them. So at 19 years old, you had been playing golf. You were, were a golfer. You enjoyed the game uh, thoroughly. And then one day you just said, hey, I'm having some difficulty seeing. I can't see far away or, or near. And then it got progressively worse pretty quickly. And you found out that it was a genetic mm -hmm. disorder. Right. I thought I just needed glasses or contacts. And when I went and saw the optometrist, uh, he had me cover my left eye. And when I did that, I couldn't see anything on the eye chart. So I thought I needed some thick glasses. <laughs> and in a matter of two months, my left eye went bad as well and wow. rendered me legally blind, uh, which I've been for over 11 years now. And because of it, I'm no longer able to read uh, without assistive technology or extreme magnification. I'm no longer able to drive and I'm no longer able to distinguish faces. And that was a it was extremely tough to take at 19. And I was, I was not even thinking about golf at that point. I was just trying to understand life. Yeah, so yeah. When, at that age, and that's such a critical age in, in any child's development and young adults of development, um, did you feel at that point that things were not just going to be different for you forever, but that in, in some cases a lot of things you used to do were just done forever? For sure. For sure. It was a, a lot of thinking like, what, what can I do? I mean, I, I could, I, I kind of, like you said, at 19 years old, you, you're, you're gaining that independence. You're able to do really anything and everything you want. And then all of a sudden uh, you feel like lost away from you. And then you think like, what, what can I do? And then that's just a, a challenging question and difficult question to ask yourself at 19. It's, uh, it was no fun. That's for sure. So take us through your accomplishments then um, to date. So you're in your, your uh, early 30s. Uh, you've been legally blind now for 10 to 12 years, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and But you, you stayed with golf. You started playing golf. And then what have you accomplished since then? And we'll get into how you do it here pretty soon. But what have you accomplished since then? Yeah, so my mom found blind golf. I now compete in blind golf tournaments around the world. Like you said, blind golf kind of sounds like the start of a joke. <laughs> And, uh, I get to compete around the world, which is pretty crazy. And my dad is my guide. And with my dad as my guide, we've won three world blind golf championships and eight national blind golf championships, which is uh, a lot of fun and, and really fun to share the experience with my dad. That's so incredible. Um, Jeremy, you know, golf is so target and alignment oriented. What is it? What is like your pre-shot routine look like for you? Um, what does that look like? Yeah, I can't tell you exactly what it looks like. I don't know what it <laughs> looks like, but nice I can tell you what Mike. it feels God. like. Nice work, Mike. Uh, idiot. Is my... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, great question. Great uh. question. I, um, for me, w yeah, when I, was, when I was fully sighted and playing in high school five days a week, uh, I, from inside 100 yards, I wouldn't even 
check the yardage. I would just look at it as a front middle back pin and then kind of decide what kind of shot I would play. But now um, my dad is involved in the process. And so uh, golf is an individual sport. Flying golf is a team sport. And so my dad is my guide, caddy. He, he wears a lot of hats. Um, but we'll kind of discuss what the hole is like, um, what, what club we want to hit. Uh, if, it's, if it's off the tee, we'll kind of discuss that. And then uh, what he'll do is he'll point in the direction we want to hit the shot. I try to envision where he's pointing. I truly have no idea where he's pointing, but right. we do that just kind of to get a feel for it. And yeah. then um, I'll have done a practice swing already before that. And then I step into the shot and from behind, he, he lets me know if the club is on the toe or on the heel. Uh, and then he tells me if I need to go a little more right or left with my feet and I'll kind of turn around the ball right or left, depending on what he says. And then, uh, once he says it's good, I, I pull the trigger and hit the shot and we do that the whole way around the course. And, uh, it's, it sounds like a, it's a process, but I mean, when my dad and I play our home course together in San Diego, just the two of us, we, we get around and like, three hours, 20 minutes. So we're not, we're not super slow by any means. <laughs> well, can you, that, that is, that brings up a funny point though. Can you imagine coming up to a course and, and saying, Hey, you're going to be behind the blind guy. Oh, okay. Let me, let me make a few phone calls and move some meetings around. Cause apparently it's going to be a long day, but it doesn't sound like that's the case sure. for you. It sounds like you guys have it, have it down. What was it always been that way? Did you guys just click right away and, and, and figure out how to do this? Yeah, definitely a learning curve. I wouldn't say we clicked right away. I mean, there was, uh, on a number of levels, there were things we needed to work on. Um, in the beginning, I, I would say he over-described things. Uh, I remember playing in a pro-am at Torrey Pines for the Farmers Insurance Open one year. And on the very first hole on the tee, my dad's describing the hole to me and pointing. And I remember him vividly saying, man, these fairways are tight. And I can't see the fairways. I have no idea. And, but the rest of that round, I was feeling like the fairways were two yards wide because that's what he said to me. And that just, that ruins it for a blind guy. So it ruins, uh, it ruins I don't want to, for everybody, Jeremy, and it ruins it for everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Don't hit. Hey, don't that's forget true. that that's water's true. on the right. Don't hit it. Right. Yeah. Great. Without a doubt. Where am I going? Yeah. Right. Without a doubt. And so we, we kind of had to work on that process of him not saying anything about starting with don't, like you said. And um, and then just a whole other level of it being my dad. Uh, my dad can say something to me that I'll take very differently than if either of you said the exact same thing to me. So we kind of have to work on that process as well. So it's been a, a learning process for sure. So how did you go from, uh, I'm not going to play golf ever again. I'm not going to do a lot. I'm not going to drive. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to do a lot of things ever again to uh, that, that moment where you say, you know what, screw this. I'm not going to let this define me. I'm not going to be the blind guy. I'm going to be Jeremy, and I'm going to go out and, and play golf and, and do the things that I want to do to make me, make me happy. And has it been therapeutic for you? Yeah, I originally I wanted to give up the game because I blind golf. I didn't really want to try it because I had an expectation level of how I could play when I could see when I was fully sighted playing all the time. I was a three or four handicap and then to imagine trying to play now legally blind, I thought I, I would not get anywhere near those numbers. So it just didn't, it didn't seem intriguing to me anymore. Um, and then, like you said earlier, I, I hated slow play when I was fully sighted and I thought blind golf had to be the epitome of slow play. And I just wanted right. nothing to do with it at first. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was definitely, something that I wasn't interested in doing whatsoever. Um, but you kind of got to go through the stages of grief. So I went through denial for a while. Then I went to anger. I was mad at, at everyone and everything and mad that this happened to me. Uh, then I went to bargaining where I pleaded to, to try to get my sight back. I then went to depression, which is very real. Um, and then I went to acceptance and that's the fifth and final stage. But I, I also think you, you kind of need to try. And, and one day my dad offered to take us to the range and just hit balls. And I thought, you know what? There's no harm in going to the range. Adam, I know you don't like to do it. but uh, Not at all. I not thought, a little bit. If I go, <laughs> yeah. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to slow anyone up on the range. I can take my time, do as I want. And I said, if I miss a shot, I'm out. I'm not doing this. Um, 
but I didn't miss any shots and some of them felt really good. And that's when I started to, uh, like Mike said earlier, kind of catch the bug again and say, okay, I, I want to do this. Let's do it. So uh, Jeremy points to know is our guest. Uh, I, I don't know how to, how to title you. So I'll just say national blind golf champion. Jeremy points to know is on the stick and hack show. Yeah. So, um, Jeremy, you talked about your dad a lot and, um, tell us about a little bit about him and what's he like on the course and how has this whole process affected your relationship with him? Uh, I'm six foot two. My dad is five, nine on a good day. Uh, <laughs> he's from France, uh, came over from France to actually work at TaylorMade and then worked at oh, wow. Cleveland and Callaway. So he's worked in the golf industry for 30 years, over 30 years, but he no longer works in the golf industry is now retired, but he is uh, pound for pound. The longest player I know uh, he hits it pretty darn far for his size. And he, uh, he's, I'm, I'm very competitive. He's not as competitive as I am. So it's an interesting blend when I'm super focused, super competitive. And then he's trying to be lighthearted and crack jokes sometimes during some pretty tense situations. Um, but it's, we're, we were always really good friends. We played golf every week from when I was 12 till I was 17. Uh, every Sunday we golfed together and we had a running match and would have a, a $5 NASA between father and son. And it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Uh, but now after losing my sight, it's pretty cool. Instead of playing my ball and his ball, um, which we'll do on the weekends now in blind golf tournaments around the world. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's my guide and we're playing my ball together as a team. And yeah, our, our, our relationship has, has, has definitely gotten deep from that. And, and he's, he's one of my closest friends without a doubt. That's, that's, that's awesome. really, really cool. Um, Jeremy, the healing power of golf is something we talk about here a lot on the stick and hack show. And that's the, the ability to, for a sport or a game, a leisure activity to take you away from whatever your troubles are in your day. Now there's the healing power of golf from the, Hey, this person at work is an idiot and I don't want to talk to them and I'm not going to think about them for four hours. And then there's your healing power of golf. It has truly transformed your life and made you a better person. You could have stayed in that depression. You could have given up on most of those things and you didn't, you, you stayed in it. Why is that? And how has golf changed your outlook on your disability? Man, golf, uh, golf has done a number for me. It's, it's done so much for me in my life. Um, I, I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for golf and blind golf. Um, it's something that, it's something that gave me a sense of normalcy during a very abnormal time in my life. Uh, gave me something to continue pursuing a passion that I love pre losing my sight, um, after losing my sight. And, it's something that I, as we know, with golf, you can never perfect. So I'm always striving to get better at it. And that's something that's going to be a lifelong journey that I absolutely love. Um, and golfers can relate to that. So just to kind of have that sense of normalcy again in my life uh, has been a game changer. And then on top of that, to travel the world and play in different competitive events uh, with my dad as my guide is really uh, is, is a bonus. I love that. Um, an organization that uh, you work with a lot, uh, Jeremy, is the U.S. Blind Golf Association, and they've helped hundreds of blind people enjoy the game of golf. What, what's the organization like, and what have they done for you over the past 10 years? Man, the, the U.S. Blind Golf Association, the USBGA, is phenomenal. Um, it's, it's, what's so cool is we have tournaments around the world or around the U.S., and we have the national championship every year and you get to see the same folks uh, year in and year out compete in these tournaments and you want to beat them on the course, but off the course, you have a drink with them, hang out, chat and have a good time. And, yeah. and what I love is everyone who's a part of the USBGA and is playing in blind golf tournaments. They are there pursuing their passions. They're not the people who are on their couch wallowing about what happened to them and their sight loss they're out there pursuing their passion and having fun and they're there's they're some of the most inspirational people i know and it's a uh, it's a great group to be involved in uh, your story is inspirational yes it's powerful it is remarkable it's all of those things 
Um, but really, I think it, it also goes to the core of, of, of golf in general and, and, and a majority of America and, and the world that, that play golf in a different perspective. That's what Stick and Hack is building. We're building this, this exclusive yet inclusive club of those that love golf but don't take it too seriously. And it, I think you talked, you talked about it a little bit earlier that um, – and you're a proud Stick and Hack member as well. I appreciate that, Jeremy. Thank you. Uh, you. You talked a little bit about your competitiveness, but you have to at some point go, okay, but I can't see, so what the hell, right? You, 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 you don't take it so seriously where it ruins your day, but you're there to compete and to enjoy the game and to, and to help you. Um, you have a very cool outlook about life and, and the sport. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. And I think it's uh, uh, becoming legally blind has given me a new perspective on life, uh, literally. Uh, and, <laughs> and it's something that, uh, yeah, it's helped me have a better perspective on life and the game of golf. And, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thankful to continue playing the game. Yeah. So uh, you're a motivational speaker. Uh, without a doubt, your story is, is motivating for anybody. Uh, but you do speak at corporate events and, and retreats and golf outings and, and, and such. Um, what do people say to you uh, about this story? What are the, the number one comments that you hear? And I'm sure people are also um, a little hesitant to, to make the jokes or to, to laugh about what's, what your story is. But you do it. You, you, you laugh about it. You have yeah. jokes about it. You don't take it too seriously. It's not the end of the world. What do people say to you and how do they respond to this uh, when you're out in the world talking about it? Um, yeah, people, people are inspired. I, I try to make my story relevant to them, to the everyday normal folks. Um, and it's something that if I, yeah, I try to get people laughing. I want people to be comfortable. And if I can get them laughing, then I know they're listening. And if they're listening, I know they're learning. And that's the whole goal. Um, but if I can get them to kind of, have, have a better perspective on whatever situation they're dealing with and provide some normalcy to them, make them feel comfortable and realize that it'll be okay. Um, that's something that, that I really enjoy. So people can go to uh, jeremyponsonot.com. Um, you have an annoying T at the end of your last name, so make sure you put that on there when you... Uh... You can blame my dad for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is a, uh, a blind golfer and a guest of the Stick and Hack Show. Jeremy, uh, just a, a joy and a privilege to, uh, to talk with you. Your story is, is incredible, and congratulations on all your success, all your trophies and tournaments. But um, there's, there's something else that is even more special coming up in your life. Um, and I think you're just several weeks away from this. Tell us what the next big to do with your life is, is, uh, coming up. Uh, yeah, my, my, uh, my wife is pregnant and we're scheduled to have a baby boy, uh, in early November. So, uh, I will not be playing a lot of golf after that, but I'm <laughs> yes. both really excited. No, that. no truer words have ever been <laughs> spoken, Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> the uh, The United States Blind Golf Association is going to have a new champion over the next ten years. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, we hope you we hope you get out there, and and I will tell you this: um, of all of our guests, <laughs> all of our guests, we end asking if we can play golf with them. Okay, and I don't think I've ever really yeah. truly meant it until now <laughs> i i really maybe jim davis jim, jim davis, davis yeah uh but i really we would love to uh find a way to uh, to get out there and play with you and and um and just really experience that because that's uh i'm sure it'd be life-changing for us uh, here at stick and Hack because we 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 find what you're doing remarkable yes but um just just an incredible incredible gift that you that you have to, to be able to do this i, I would also really enjoy watching you beat adam so that would be fun <laughs> I would enjoy that. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're not going to do no five dollar Nassau though. We're going to go big cash, or we're not going at all. Uh, all Jeremy right. points no. Thank you so all much right. for your time, sir. Um, we're going to play a game called Enter yeah. Out now. Are you? Uh, do you want to stick around for this, or do you? Uh, you got to go. I'm in. You're in. Yes, I'm in. All right, so we're we're bringing the guest in for the first time here. No, this is okay? this is new. Like this, this is new. This is uh, this was Shane's idea. So if it fails, we know what we know, we know who, who to blame. blame. Yeah. Fired. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the game is called Enter Out. And so, Mike, who would, of these, this list of people, okay. would they be in your foursome or out of your foursome? Okay. Okay. So it's the three of us. Oh, look how that worked. Yeah. So it's stick. So do we have to like come to a, a consensus or is this just our own? No, it's, it's our own. 
Our own opinion. Okay. So we've got uh, stick, we've we've got hack, and we've got a blind guy. Okay. And then this fourth person that uh, that is from this list. All right, here we go. In okay. or out, and this is uh, Hollywood uh, stars and uh, and people. All right, and yeah. this is this is an, you'll the list will make itself pretty uh, clear as we go yeah. through this. Okay. Yeah. All right, number one, in or out, uh, Nick Cage. Out. I say in, Jeremy. Oh man, uh, it really depends on who's the rest of the list, but I'll go out to start. All right, he's out. Nick Cage is out. Mel Gibson. Out. <laughs> out. I say out. Quick out. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow. Out. Oh, no way. In. Gwyneth Paltrow's in. I'm out. Jeremy. I'm out. I'm with Mike. I'm out. Oh, you're, you. you guys are out of your mind. We could, you. you could talk about the movie Seven for the entire round. Think about that. Not, yeah, what's in the box? You could keep asking her what's in the box. We're not going to talk about goop or whatever the hell it is. We're going to talk about seven. All right. Fine. But she won't want to talk about that. She'll well, she's going to have to. She'll want to talk about goop. I don't care. Four and a half hours with us. She's going to talk about oh, seven. God. Robert Pattinson, the new Batman. <laughs> Out. In. Robert Pattinson. I'll say in. in. Jeremy, you say in? No. Oh. I say in. Yeah. You, you can talk All about right, you can talk about Batman. Okay. Uh, Tyler Perry. Out. Out. 100% <laughs> out. No chance. No thank you. Pass. Hard out on Tyler Perry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll stay out. Yeah. Unless he's dressed up as Medea. That's the only way I want him in there. <laughs> Tyler Perry uh, bothers me. Uh, there is no one, there's been no one on this list so far. Though, well, yeah, but that's your own personal demons <laughs> talking there. I guess. Uh, Anne Hathaway. In. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy? Anne Hathaway. I'll say in. 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 All yeah. right. I say out. Uh, Adam Sandler. <laughs> Absolutely in. Out. I say out. Absolutely in. No. Absolutely in. Exactly. That's exactly, why, that's all exactly why he should be out. Because he won't do Happy Gilmore stuff. He'll do That's Uncut fine. Gems stuff. <laughs> he was really good in that movie. I mean, the movie sucked, but he was good in it. No, Adam Sandler's out. Shia LaBeouf. I think in. <laughs> Only because he's insane, and I would love to just like spend four hours. And he'll that. wear that bag on his head. Whatever. I'm not famous. Whatever that crap was. I don't know. Jeremy, what do you think? Shia LaBeouf. Hard in. See? Hilarious. I think it would be really? I think it would be interesting. Yeah. If nothing else, I think it but would Nick be. But Nick Cage is out. You want interesting. Nick Cage is in. Uh, Shy is in. Whatever. Angelina Jolie. In. <laughs> Pass. Out. Jeremy? In. No for way. Sure. I'm not playing. I won't for go. Sure. I won't show up for the tea <laughs> time. Sure. I swear to God. Angelina Jolie is the worst. Uh, Ryan Seacrest. Out. In. I was one break away from being Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> were, were you? Was, Is that I what was. you tell yourself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the morning. I could be Ryan Seacrest. That's funny. Jeremy, what do you think about Seacrest? In? Uh, I say in. Yeah. In. Okay. I don't All think right. he's as douchey as he is on American Idol. I think he's actually fine. But that's what people say about me. <laughs> I All right. It's so Ticket no X comment. show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us here. Jeremy. A privilege and an honor, sir. Thank you for being on the on the program. Mike, proud of you. Proud of you, man. Show brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping. Go to Manscaped.com and put in the code stick and hack. You guys have a great week. Bye. Peace out, guys. The Stick and Hack Show is now over. Subscribe, rate, comment, and tell your friends. You are now free to go about your day.